our previous video, we used the MySQL Workbench to create our database. In this video, we're going to use the terminal. Now, don't worry, in our next video, we will be back inside our Golang code. So, when it comes to using the terminal, you have several different options. So, if you go down to your start menu and in the search bar, put in CMD and then enter, that'll pull up your command prompt. And to connect to our database, I put in our MySQL shell. We're going to go ahead and put MySQL, name our user flag. Our user is root in this instance, and our password flag. Put in our password, and as you can see, we have connected to our MySQL shell. So now I can run commands like show databases, and it's going to go ahead and show our database. Remember, we made test DB and the previous lesson. So uh, remember, I also had mentioned that you can use the word schemas and databases interchangeably. Notice that you know show databases, show schemas, still getting still getting the same result. Uh, anyway, I have my uh, Windows terminal installed, and this can be kind of handy because. You know, I can have my PowerShell open right beside a command prompt, right beside my Linux. Just kind of neat having them all in the same window. Um, I don't have MySQL installed on the Linux side yet, so I'm not going to use that one. Also, to get that option, I think I probably had to enable a developer feature. Just a heads up if you're on Windows. Uh, of course, we've just messed with the command prompt already. Um, same thing here. To connect MySQL, user flag, name of our user, password flag, password, and we are in. And there's our databases. Um, another option, if you want, there is the MySQL shell. So if you put that down in your start menu and hit enter, you can pull that up. Uh, one thing to be aware of, for instance, mine opened up in JavaScript mode. So to switch that mode, uh, just back, backslash SQL. And notice that we are now using SQL. And the commands I'm going to be using are going to be SQL versions. So um, if you wanted to switch it to a different mode, it's just backslash and whatever mode you want that to be. But anyway, we're going to be dealing with SQL. So there we go. So in our previous uh, lesson, we created the test DB database. We're going to go ahead and create a database using the terminal. Um, pretty much mirrors it. We're just going to call it test DB2. So create database. And notice I'm using a back tick here. And another back tick. And then my semicolon. Um, your database names, your table names, your field names. Make sure you use the back tick. So if you're reading someone else's code and you see a back tick, just understand, hey, I'm looking at either at a database name, you know, it could be a database name, it could be you know, a table name, it could be a field name. Um, I don't have to, also, I don't have to capitalize create and database. These are reserved words for SQL. Um, so I'm going to try to remember to capitalize these so you can, when you look at it, like, hey, reserved words, and this is the text I created on my own. Um, just remember, back ticks are for the database tables and field names and so on. Okay, there we go. So we've created our database. If you push on your up arrow, you can find some of your previous commands, show databases. As you can see, we did not have a test DB2, and now, and now we do. So we need to use this database. So and we want to use database change. So now we're officially using test DB2. And if I want to show tables, as you're going to see, we haven't created any tables yet. So we got an empty set. We need to go ahead and create a table. So we're going to put in create table. And like I said, back tick because name of our database period in between, and we're going to create a student's table. Now I'm going to hit enter. This is not going to execute any commands because I have not put in a semicolon yet. 
So I just want to put this on different lines so it's easier to read. Backticks because this is a field name. Make this the type int, not null. So you have to have, there has to be a value there. Create my next field. Go with first name, variable character, be up to 45 long, not null. And we'll go with our car again. Also not null. And we want our primary key to be the ID field. Also notice this parenthesis is being closed with this parenthesis. So now I have my semicolon. If I hit enter, it won't take me into a new line. It'll actually execute. Let's see if we typed in everything correctly. Okay, there we go. So if we go back to show tables, there we go. We now have our students table. And let's say if I go back to the workbench and I refresh my schemas, and my test DB2, test DB2, and I have my students table. Now, if I try to select everything from test DB2 students table, We're going to get an empty set. We haven't put any information in there yet. So we want to go ahead and insert some values. So insert into testdb2 students table. And notice I'm still using the backticks ID field, first name field, last name field with the values of now notice I'm using the single single quote here um, I don't want to use a back quote here these are actual values I'm going to be inserting so I'm going to be inserting the value 1 Jane and Doe so back ticks like I said for for these because these are the name of the columns and these are actual values we're passing in so they're going to be single quote let's see if we type it correctly there we go let's go back and you know push up twice to get back to our select all from test db2 students table there we go so we actually have something in there if i want to insert a second one Oh, uh, there it is. There we go. Oops, not show tables. Uh, I meant uh, select all from the test DB2. Uh, t uh, database students table. There we go. So now we have our two different values um, and I can update those values just like we were doing in the workbench. So update backtick test db2 and students table and I want to set last name and let's just make set last name equal to uh, let's just go with Smith um, notice that these are like I said back ticks but since I'm putting in a new value this one needs to be a single quote where is equal to 
to again back quotes sing, uh, back 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 tick uh, single quote and while I'm searching since I I want to make sure I have the one and only of these since I could have say several uh, people last name Johnson ID field is our primary key so I know that there's only going to be one ID of two there we go let's go ahead and select all again and we changed John Johnson to John Smith and let's say if I wanted to delete one of these delete SDB2 students I gotta say where and we'll go over the syntax of this uh, much more in the future D is equal to two. Query OK. There we go. So we deleted the second one. Now, uh, the next two commands, be extremely careful with. Any, like I said, anytime you see something that says drop, be extremely careful. Um, the database expects you to be you know, a professional ex expert. So you see the word drop, it's not gonna it, it's not gonna ask you twice, you know, more than likely. It's just gonna drop it and that information might just be gone. So uh, anyway, we're gonna go ahead and drop uh, table test db2 dot students. And there we go. So if I go back to show tables, it's gone. So we went ahead and deleted it. Uh, same, same thing with the drop command for databases. Say drop database test db2. And once we hit it, it's gone. So As you can see, we have test DB regular, but we don't have test DB two anymore. So, anyway, um, many of you will probably start. You know, if you haven't started using the command line more, um, once you get used to it, it does. Uh, it, it feels nice to be able to perform a lot of the commands you want to do and look through stuff really quickly without actually pulling your hands off the keyboard. But anyway. Um, We'll go over the syntax some more in these future videos. Um, of course, we'll have to know the syntax to uh, put it into our Golang code. So, uh, stuff that we'll need to know, but we'll go over it a little bit further. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please post it in the comments. Uh, I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.